Hey, you guys, it's Michelle Medlock Adams. And as a lot of you know, I'm a children's book author. I've been writing for children for many years now. I have over 60 books for kids, over 100 books total. But you know, one of the books that I've written that's probably the most meaningful and certainly is applicable for what we're going through today with this coronavirus and the panic that's kind of widespread is a book called I Will Not Be Afraid. I wrote it for Concordia Publishing House. And I just thought I'd tell you a little bit about the history of that. You know, I started, I wrote this book actually when my girls were very little, it was right after 9-11. And in my career, I have to travel quite a bit. I speak at women's conferences and teach a lot of writers conferences. So I'm always getting on a plane. And th during that season, my girls were so afraid for me to get on a plane because they'd seen the footage of the airplanes crashing into the Twin Towers on 9-11 as well as the, the one crashing in Pennsylvania. And so they were just, they would hang onto my legs like, mommy, don't go. They were just afraid for me to, to travel. So in response to that, I started doing this little cheer at them at night. I will not be afraid at all. And I'd say, and then they'd say, I will not be afraid at all. And we'd go back and forth. And I said, God didn't give you a spirit of fear. That's what it says, right? And so we would go back to what the word of God said about fear. And then I wrote a book, a rhyming children's book for like ages four to seven. That was the intent to help other children with other childhood fears, like being afraid of the dark or being afraid of dogs or being afraid of meeting new people or going on stage or war or death or whatever. Kids, kids are very sensitive and they often internalize a lot of things, but they don't know how to express how they're feeling. And especially when you've got the footage on all the different news organizations are 24 seven covering this coronavirus thing. And so I have a friend, well, a new friend that I met at a writer's conference this past weekend who said that she's a children's um, preschool director and that some of the kids were being dropped off just hysterically crying. Uh, they were saying, I, I don't want to die of the coronavirus. I'm, I'm afraid of dying of the virus that's going around. They didn't always know the proper name, but they knew that they were very scared of it. So this director said, you gosh, we need to be ministering to our kids and pulling them close. Let them know that God's in control and that though we're taking precautions and we're washing our hands more and we're using the antibacterial gel and we're wiping down things with Clorox wipes more so than usual and really just practicing great hygiene, drinking lots of water, taking vitamin C and elderberry and all the things that they that the CDC is suggesting and there's a whole list you can look it up online um, though we're doing all of that we're trusting God in all of this too and that there's no reason to panic because God is a God of order he's not a God of panic and he's with us in the good times and the bad times and so though people are dying yes and there's been like a travel ban I believe that President Trump has, has issued for uh, 30 days not going over to Europe um, for the next 30 days and the NBA has canceled their season the rest of their season and I just heard today that the NCAA has now canceled all tournament games, not just without the fans, but nobody, they're not going to play them. These are some unprecedented things that are happening, but still in all of that, we need to assure our children that God is in control, that he's bigger than all of our fears, and he's much mightier than the coronavirus, <laughs> so we can take it to him in prayer. But you know, this little book, though I wrote it for my children, Abby and Allie, when they were little and dealing with fears, um, it's gone all over the world when there's been national tragedies, when the shootings happened at Sandy Hook of unspeakable tragedy. Uh, that was horrible for that community. They flooded the community with this book so that the children who were, um, who their classmates were victims and who they were afraid to go back to school, they could have this, they could have this as sort of a, almost like a security blanket. They could read it every night and they could meditate on the scriptures. When the tornado ripped through Moore, Oklahoma, and I believe there were a couple of children killed in the fourth grade class, if I remember correctly, a woman took it upon herself and partnered with the Concordia Publishing House Missions Outreach, and they bought a bunch of these and said, I will not be afraid out to all of the kids in that community because it talks about being afraid of storms in here. So I wish I had a bunch just to give you. <laughs> um, I do not, but I thought I could at least read this to you so that you could maybe uh, speak about fear with your children and comfort them and pray over them. There are, there are scriptures at the bottom of each one of these pages that I'm going to read to you. Whatever is fear we're talking about, I have a scripture that that goes along with it and you know it says in the word that god's word never returns void so i know this word is powerful not because i wrote it but because it corresponds to scripture so i thought i'd read it to you if you just give me that luxury one of my own little personal testimonies is just a couple months ago i was on a, a southwest air airline I was i was on an airplane headed south and i was going to be teaching about freelance writing and that morning as i was getting ready i heard the holy spirit say you know not in that big Morgan Freeman or Charlton Heston voice, but just down in here, I heard the Lord say, take a copy of I Will Not Be Afraid in Your Briefcase. And I, you know, that was pretty specific request. I heard it a couple of times. I thought, okay, I'll do that. So I believe, I believe I'm hearing from you, Lord, but if I'm not, it, what's it going to cost me? Just take an extra book, not a big deal. 
But once I sat down on the airplane that day, um, I was on the, the window seat on this side of the plane. A mom and daughter came in and they sat right next to me. The little girl was in the center seat. She was crying. She was kind of breathing irregularly and very upset. I could tell something was going on. And, and then I quickly figured out it was her first flight. And she was really deathly afraid of flying. Her mom hadn't been on too many flights and she wasn't much better. And so she, she said, ma'am, would you please put the window shade down? I'm like, I don't want to look outside. I'm afraid. And I, so I did. I put the window shade down and I said, you know, you don't have to be afraid. In fact, God's with us right here in the airplane. And I, I have a book about fear in my briefcase. And would you want to read that book? Or maybe I could read it to you. And her mother said, hey, she's a voracious reader. She loves to read. And she's ahead of all of her classmates. So she actually took the book and read it to all of us there in the plane. And it calmed her nerves. And I think it might have calmed a couple other people's nerves. And, I, and by the end of, well, actually, by the time we took off, she was a lot better. But by the end of the flight, she was perfectly um, at peace. And I credit the word of God for that. So I signed the book to her and she took it along with her on her journey. But I just thought, wow, that's why I do what I do. You know, as a children's book writer, it's, it's such a, an honor to write for God's kids. And I mean, yeah, the awards and things that you see, those are nice. I, and it's an honor to be, to be recognized in my industry for the work that I do. But that's not why I do this. I do this because God gives you a message that you think is just for your kids, maybe your grandkids, and then God uses it to touch other children's hearts and to help heal the nation. So I just... I thought I would read this to you. Maybe you could um, take some of the scriptures that I'm going to be saying that are at the bottom of each of the spreads and, and pray them over your children and say them with your children. So let's just, if you don't mind, I'll just read this to you. It's called, I Will Not Be Afraid. And let's get going. So it's by me, Michelle Midlock Adams, and then the art done by Jeremy. And I think his last name is Togo. It's T-U-G-E-A-U. It could be Togu. I'm not sure, but he did a great job. So here we go. When the thunder booms kaboom and when the lightning strikes, I will not be afraid at all. I won't yell, eek or yikes. And it's Matthew 8, 26. You have little faith. Why are you so afraid? Here's the picture. And when it's really dark at night and I'm alone in bed, I will not be afraid at all. I will not hide my head. And that is Psalm 32, 7. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. There she is. She's resting peacefully. And when I meet new boys and girls and I am feeling shy, I will not be afraid at all. I will not scream or cry. And it's Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, do not worry. All right. And when I have to go on stage and sing my special part, I will not be afraid at all. I'll sing with all my heart. And the verse is Psalm 33, 1. Sing joyfully to the Lord, you righteous. It is fitting for the upright to praise him. There she is on stage. She's singing her special part. I think the artwork is beautiful in this. And if our country is at war and troubles everywhere, I will not be afraid at all because I know God is there. And it's uh, Hebrews 13, 5 and 6. God has said, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper. I, helper, I will not be afraid. And there's the picture. The Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid. Next, I do not have to be afraid when bad things come my way. I will not be afraid at all. That's what I have to say. My God is in control of all the storms, the night, the war. I trust God and I love him so. He loves me even more. And 1 Peter 5, 7 says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. So you can cast all of your worries and cares, even this coronavirus scare, onto the Lord. He can handle it. God is bigger than anything, lots bigger than my fears, and I can call on him for help, because when I pray, he hears, and it says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him, I'll protect him, for he acknowledges my name, he will call upon me, and I will answer him, I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him, that's Psalm 91, 14 and 15. God made me to be brave and strong, but even when I'm not, God helps me not to be afraid, because he loves me a lot. And it's Philippians 4.13, I can do everything through him who gives me strength. Right, that's a, that's a oldie but a goodie, is it? I think that's what we probably all memorized in BBS when we were little. God promises to never leave. He's always here with me. That's why I will not be afraid. I have no need to be. Psalm 91.11 says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. God sent his son to die for me. That sure is great to know, because even when my life is through, I know just where I'll go. 
I'll go to heaven up above, and there's no fear up there. I'll live forever with my Lord, forever in his care. And 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity or a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. I love that. God did not give us a spirit of fear, did he? Till then I'll say, Lord, take my sins, protect me every day. Thank you so much for loving me and hearing when I pray. I will not be afraid at all because you are my friend. Your perfect love removes my fear and your love has no end. And Joshua 1, 9 says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. I love that verse. That's one of my favorites. So very wonderful. And the parenting moment says, the Bible says we do not have a spirit of fear. So do not be afraid. The Bible also tells us that God will never leave us, so we're never alone. Isn't that good to know? Talk with your child about fears of all kinds and about ways to combat those fears. Together, write a prayer that will help to alleviate these fears and instill confidence in the protection and the promises that are ours through Christ Jesus. This prayer can be as simple as, Jesus, I know you are here with me and I will not be afraid. Then the next time something happens to frighten your child like this coronavirus, you can remind him or her that they are always in God's care and grace. I just thought I'd pray over you and your children right now if you allow me that. All right. Father, I thank you so much for your love. I thank you, Lord, that you are the God of everything, that you're with us during the good, the bad, and the ugly, that you promise to never leave us, forsake us, Father. What a comfort that is to know. Lord, I just pray for those who, in the CDC and those who are in the authority over us. Lord, just pray peace over their hearts or give them wisdom to know how to um, treat this coronavirus, Lord, that will find a, a cure for this. Father, I also pray for those who are already affected for their healing. Lord, I pray that the spread stops in Jesus' name of this, of this uh, virus. And Lord, I just pray peace over everybody's heart who might be listening today. I pray that, that you will give us the words to comfort our children and that these scriptures, Lord, we are so grateful for your word because your word never returns void. Thank you, Father, for giving us, us these scriptures about fear and Lord, for calming our hearts. We love you, Father, and we are thankful for you. We're thankful for your promises. I pray now, Lord, over everybody listening, that you would heal their hearts that you would heal their fears, and that, Lord, you would heal our land. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Amen. All right, thanks for listening, and, and I hope that you will not be afraid. All right, talk to you guys later.